What is up, players? It's Warboss Tamp in his mug. Welcome to my first tutorial in my new spot, my new studio. So we're finishing up our Death Corp Creek Quartermaster. We've got Mornfang Brown, Karak Stone, and uh, these are the colors that we're using to paint him today. Gorthor Brown, mainly just highlights and final details. Russ Gray. And region gray. And oh, what an awesome figure. Forge World does it again. Eshin gray. This is a new style I'm using to highlight black, and I find it very, very good. Corn red. Mephiston red. Pallid Witch flesh. And Balthazar Gold. To highlight all the silver, we're using Runefang Steel, Lead Belcher, and uh, I believe that is it for the paints. One thing that I forgot to do was to use my Micron Arts pen here, 0 .005 in black ink, and I forgot to write the script on the purity seal, so this is the Micron pen, again 0 .005. Let's get right in there. This is the final, final step before I uh, spray this guy with some purity seal and get him boxed up and off to the client. So when doing script on purity seal using the Micron Arts pen, you want to try to make the lines as close as you can, as close as possible. and uh, that makes the illusion of lots of script easier to believe. It's for the for the eye easier for the eye to uh, kind of process. So I also like to try to do little squiggles to make it have semblance of words without actually being words. And if you want to get fancy, then you can also try to do like uh, word breaks, paragraph breaks. Um, any anything like that to fool the eye even further. So there you go, a Death Corps of Krieg, Quartermaster, Quartermaster Dane. Ain't nothing to mess with. Here's one final look around at the finished model and how following today's tutorial will help you achieve this effect. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, here we go! So when we left off, our watch was just drying on our model here and we're going to start from the feet up and we're going to work our way up starting with Mornfang Brown. So I'm just highlighting the tops of his boots here, giving a little bit of color back. And also hitting up, I believe I, yeah, here we go. Added a little bit of that color to the belt as well. I think this is where I realized that his breastplate there underneath the, the cape is, uh, I painted it accidentally like it's the color of his uniform. So I'm gonna have to go back over that with lead belcher later. Now we're touching up the holster, the leather holster there, with Mornfang Brown. Okay, continuing on, Gorthor Brown to highlight all of the triad bark. So that would be the gloves as well as the trousers. And what we're going to try to hit, the areas we're going to try to hit are the uppermost areas that would be closest to the light source as well as any areas that are kind of stretched out. So these little uh, wrinkles in the folds, uh, the folds of the, of the trousers here. Yeah, so I, 
uh, the lady boss and I have been trying to drive around San Francisco where we are and find some hobby stores and I didn't realize that most of all of the places in the Bay Area that I've been going to or listening to on on podcasts and stuff have shops in the Bay. Russ Gray to highlight the uniform now. So uh, I've been listening to um, a lot of great podcasts including Frontline Gaming and uh, there's this other one. Let me see if I can find it. The Stuff of Legends from Legends Comics and Games. Uh, they seem to be in the area. I also, uh, today we just went to visit Game Castle with a K and a fantastic store. So much stuff. So, uh, the looks like the War Boss Tay um, hobby. Like my being in the community, it looks like there is a community after all for me to get in. I just need to figure out where everybody is. So currently right now I'm in uh, San Mateo and uh, just finding, you know, getting used to finding my way around. And I'm not talking about the Quartermaster at all. Okay, so as you can see, I've been trying to follow the folds and the shadows of this folded up area. So you can still see the Agrax Earthshade there in the recesses. Now when I'm going down the back of the coat there, I'm really trying to hit the just uh, the areas that are obviously in the in the light. And I'm following the line of the of the coat itself. So sorry, I'm getting getting in focus there. So I'm starting from the top and just working my way down and just feathering the paint really lightly. Remember, use less paint than you think you need. A lot of people like to put too much paint on their paintbrush. They get so excited to put the next layer down. Uh, you don't realize that Citadel paints are, are quite thick. So they need to either be wiped almost completely off of your brush before you go and just have a little bit on the tip there, or you need to thin it down with a little bit of water or uh, some kind of thinning medium in preferably in like a, a wet palette. Okay, so now we're gonna hit the cuffs. My uh, strategy for highlighting his uniform in the sleeves is the same with all Krieg infantry, and that is just work on the areas that are like the outer parts of the cloth. So I'm not going to hit the bottom, I'm just going to hit right where the light would naturally shine, and that way you keep the Agrax earth shade in the, in the shadows nice and dark. Alright, so the next highlight that we're going to hit with our guy is Lead Belcher. And this is actually, um, when you hit Lead Belcher or a dark silver with Agrax Earthshade, then uh, it creates a nice dark balance. But first of all, I'm going to hit the back of the breastplate there. cover up my, my mistake from earlier. Oh, and I just tagged the inside of the cloak. So a lot of this video is going to be fixing mistakes that you made before or that you're making now. And as, a, as I was talking about, when you use Agrax Earthshade on silver, you get a very uh, oily or rusted kind of look. So highlighting it back up first with Lead Belcher is a great way to... Um, I, I don't want this guy's equipment to look rusty basically is what I'm saying, but I do want that nice dark shadow in the in the uh, recesses. So I'm gonna highlight it back up with Lead Belcher, and then in just a little bit I'm gonna go a step further with Rune Fang Steel. But I think we're gonna leave that for now and come back to it later, because that, that silver splotch I did in the lining of the cloak is really bugging me. So I'm gonna go at it first with Corn Red, and uh, I am not into the goth culture. My fingernail happens to be black because I use a black primer to prime some models. I didn't have my gloves and I wasn't, <laughs> I was impatient and I just said, ah, the heck with it. I primed my whole finger along with the model and I was able to scrub most of it off, but 
unfortunately, when you get primer on your on your fingernails, that does not go away. Okay, so with the corn red, I'm first of all hitting, just re-highlighting what we had before, and I was just hitting the the darker areas of the cloak. Now going in with the Mephiston red, I'm going to really focus on the folds that are on the outside of the cloak or the folds that are closest to the light source. So I'm going to use, I like diagonal slashes, diagonal brush strokes. So that's kind of what I'm really hitting the liner of the cloak with right here. You can see it. I'm going to hit the area over here that is catching the light and then the area over here in the fold that's still catching the light. So you have a nice rich blood red fabric. As for the other side, we're going to start up here by the collar and work our way down. Again, using diagonal slashes to create the effect of the cloth rippling uh, back, the, the sense of motion. And you want to thin down your paints. I think some of my paint was a little bit too thick at this point, but I'm going to thin it down so it covers smoothly, evenly. It's a bright, vibrant color, so I'm going to try to blend it in as much as I can with that lower color there. And at this point, my brain is saying, how am I going to highlight this black? Am I going to use a dark blue? Am I going to use a gray? What am I going to do? Okay, I'm finishing up this red here. And it looks like we're also hitting the wax on the purity seals. I decided screamer pink. I just didn't like the purple of the screamer pink. So I went back with the red and touched it up, highlighted it back up, and yeah, I was really happy with it. drop of water on my paint pad or my cutting board. Fenrisian Grey. Oop, wipe that up. So Fenrisian Grey is our final highlight for the uniform. This is also one of my more favorite uh, highlights, the the second highlight after the shade. It's the one where you can really create some really nice effects and uh, show off some good skill by uh, sh by making visible paint strokes with this one. The transition of the color with these final uh, highlight shades I think is, is, is really helpful in 
creating like a good look for your model that really makes the certain areas pop on him. For example, all the folds in his, his great coat here, you can get some really dynamic looks for it. Especially when you, uh, like my, my whole theory of base coat, shade, highlight, or re-highlight with the, the color you just shaded, and then do a second highlight over that, I think is, is really, really good at achieving um, good high quality tabletop models. Even though they might not win any Golden Demon awards, I think they're uh, really good. It's a really good standard to have your models at. Anyone who picks it up will not be disappointed. I've seen some models that look, you know, pretty decent from across the room, and then you get up to them and you pick them up, and uh, you can obviously see where they, uh, the painter skipped some, some steps. They were not meant to be picked up. I like having paint jobs or teaching people how to paint to a standard where somebody could pick up the model and think, oh, I see what you did there, or oh, I wonder how you achieved that effect. It looks even better now that I'm picking it up and looking at it than when, you know, it's on the table. Because it is art. No matter what my, <laughs> no matter what people tell you, it's art, mom. I wish you were a doctor or a lawyer. Carrick Stone. I don't know. Why does my mom have a British accent? I don't know, son. Just like I don't know why you took up this hobby. Why couldn't you be a doctor? Oh. Med school, mom. What am I doing? Karak Stone is the highlight for these leg wraps. Yeah, if you've got a good amount of Agrax Earthshade in the in the leg wraps there, then it'll give them a really dirty, uh, worn-in, battle battle-weary look. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, this is my first tutorial using this new space, and uh, I guess I'm having a hard time getting the camera to focus. So, apologies, everybody. Okay, going back in to the purity seals now. Okay, so the purity seals have been done up with Carrick Stone. Everything is on track. Now we're going to use Pallid Witch Flesh. Ooh, this is my favorite part for this model because what makes the Quartermaster stick out from the other Deathcore of Krieg on the field is his skeletal breastplate and mask. And the uh, Pallid Witch Flesh, I thought that, you know, why don't we just go, go all out and just really give a, a, a bright ivory cream colored off-white highlight to to all of the bone parts and um, it came out as you saw from the the beginning of this video it came out really really well I think so here's where I show how to do that now just like with the highlights for the sleeve we're kind of taking the natural curve of the rib cage and we're highlighting up the parts that would most likely get the the light shine uh, reflecting off of them. So for me, that's where the curve of the rib cage is, as well as the top parts of the bones that are closer into the the center of the rib cage. So it's kind of blurry, but you can see that I'm holding the model in such a way that I can really get a good angle at hitting the top part of the bone for the ribs and I'm really focusing on the curve as it curves around the, 
the front of the chest as well as the top part of each of the bones. And there you go. If you make a mistake and you get any of this pallid witch flesh in between the bones, just go back over with Agrax Earthshade. Now we're hitting the mask, again using uh, brush strokes that follow the line of the sculpt. So under the eye, like the cheekbones, under the curve of the eye, you saw that I kind of had like a horizontal brush stroke. Now that I'm going for the teeth and the lower jaw, it's straight up and down vertical brush strokes. Here we go under the other eye, I'm going vertically following the curve of the cheekbone. And that allows you to just have like a smooth, a smooth um, blend of the colors, which is what you want. There you go. Rune Fang Steel is the color that we're going to use to edge highlight all of the dark iron parts, as well as some, some as well as some of the silver areas of our quartermaster. So we're going to start with the pistol, and we're just doing a line of Rune Fang Steel right down the center. Now we're hitting up the iron plates on the back of each glove. And I'm just following the rim, hitting up all of the, the silver sections. Now the uh, shoulder shoulder plates, I believe, we're going to get onto. And just following the line, being very, uh, very imprecise, but not sloppy. If you were sloppy, then the brush strokes could have been too thick, or you could see too much Runefang steel, but you don't want it so precise that it's an edge highlight, like a highlight on a, on, a, on a Space Marine's armor, for example. You want the edge highlight to kind of look, um, I guess, imprecise in that you could see like all the little strokes on the edge, and that way it kind of looks like it was uh, the edge has been has been worn down. You can see the bare silver metal underneath. So now we're just edging the entire outside of this helmet. Making our way all the way around. And then hitting the top and the sides where the where the curve is in the helmet with some diagonal slashes show scratch marks and stuff and then we're hitting the eagle the eagle has been gold so we're going to kind of show the reflection of light off of that gold using runefang steel to create the optical illusion of light reflecting off the gold Finally, we're hitting the tube there, his rebreather tube for his mask. And that's it for that section. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Balthazar Gold, and I think I'm using the Balthazar Gold to re-highlight, or actually to touch up on the button that is pinning the flap of the great coat to the inside. Yep, there it is, right there. As well as the little iron eagle on the shoulder. And I think that was all I used. Eschen Grey is our final color that we're going to use, and we're just going to use Eschen Grey to highlight the black cloak cape. Cloak has a hood, right? Cape doesn't, like Superman has a cape. Okay. I, I don't know. So we're following the lines, and I think, going back, you could also have used Rust Grey. Um, but I think because we use Rust Grey so much, Eschen Grey is pretty much like rust gray but a little bit darker so eschen gray has kind of a little bit of blue to the gray and that um, that's very very 
effective when you're highlighting black cloth in particular. If you're using lots of single brush strokes like I am over here on the edge of the cape, then it creates the illusion of fabric billowing in the wind, which is what I want. Ah, focus, focus, focus. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, this, again, was my first tutorial, and I'm, I promise I'm going to try to get better at the focus on the camera, figuring out how far I have to hold the model and, and all of that stuff. It's a, it's a brave new world for me to be in, so I appreciate your patience and hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial on how to paint a Death Corps of Krieg Quartermaster, Quartermaster Dane. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Thumbs up.